speaking. Questions will be taken up during the time allotted for the Q&A following the opening address by Ambassador Vladimir Gorov. Participants can raise their hand by clicking on the raised hand symbol on the screen and wait. They can unmute themselves and pose a question or make an observation when their name is mentioned by the chair. It is requested that question and observations should be brief and to the point. In case participants are facing connectivity issues, they can switch off the camera and continue on audio mode. The session is webcast also. This webcast is also streamed on ICWA channels at YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Thank you. May I now request DG ICWA to deliver the welcome remarks and conduct the proceedings. Thank you, sir. Uh, good afternoon. I hope I'm audible. Ambassador Vladimir Norov, Secretary General of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, uh, joining from his office in Beijing. Ambassador Vikas Swaroop, Secretary West in the Ministry of External Affairs, Government of India, senior officers of the Government of India, ambassadors, experts, distinguished participants. Let me welcome you all today to our event, India SEO Engagement, The Next Steps. This has been organized in an online format, obviously due to the prevailing health and travel conditions. Uh, Secretary General, uh, may I begin by thanking you for joining us today, despite all the pressures on your time. You, of course, know our council very well and have visited us on more than one occasion. Our relationship, in fact, goes back even before you had joined the SCO. Through your efforts, our relationships with research institutions in Uzbekistan have grown much stronger. So we are gratified with your participation in this consultation. Likewise, the, grateful, the Council is grateful to Secretary Vikas Swaroop for joining us today despite all the pressures and demands on his uh, time. As you are all aware, India had joined the SCO in 2017 after over a decade-long engagement as observer. Later this year, we will be hosting the SCO Heads of Government meeting, and this consultation has been organized in the run-up to that very important gathering of SCO leaders so as to provide suggestions and inputs for that summit. Our Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi, has focused on developing relations with neighbors and our extended neighbors. The, the, the leaders of our immediate neighbors had attended the swearing-in ceremony of his first government. Thereafter, the President of the Kyrgyz Republic had graced the swearing-in ceremony of his second government in May 2019. The Heads of Government Summit will be held in the backdrop of a severe global disruption that we are still in the midst of. The pandemic, of course, was a black swan event, but it is not as if ep epidemics and calamities visited by biology are new to human history. How we deal with this pandemic and how we will deal with its numerous after effects, medical, economic, social, and others, is obviously one key question before any platform of regional cooperation. And yet, the pandemic does not mean that other forms of human activity have ground to a halt. They have not, and all the geopolitics of our normal pre-pandemic life also obviously continue. How we address future agendas in the light of our recent experiences is therefore obviously the question before us. In the 2019 SCO summit at Bishkek, Kyrgyz Republic, the Prime Minister of India had proposed a vision to strengthen healthy cooperation in the region. He had said, and I quote, the letters health can be a good template for our cooperation. H for healthcare cooperation, 
E for economic cooperation, A for alternate energy, L for literature and culture, T for terrorism, free society, H for humanitarian cooperation. He also mentioned that India will be happy to share its experiences in the field of telemedicine and medical tourism for the SEO's 2019-2021 work plan on healthcare. This was further reiterated by India's Minister for External Affairs, Dr. S. J. Shankar, in the video conference of Ministers of Foreign Affairs of SCO member states that was chaired by Russia in May 2020. He had then reaffirmed, I quote, India's strong commitment to the joint fight against the COVID-19 pandemic and its readiness to share information, expertise, and best practices amongst the SCO member states, unquote. We believe that both these interventions underline the importance of non-traditional security agendas in any future cooperation, in any future program of regional cooperation, alongside the whole menu and portfolio of political and economic issues that exist. How we give greater priority to non-traditional security may, may well therefore be one yardstick by which we will be judged in the future. Greater interaction will lead to fruitful innovation, and I am sure our interaction today will lead to useful policy takeaways for all stakeholders. With these brief remarks, I would now like to invite Secretary Vikas Swaroop to deliver his opening address. Thank you very much. I think you have to unmute yourself, Vikas. Can you hear me now? Okay. Good afternoon, Director General of ICWA, Ambassador T.C. Raghavan, Secretary General of SCO, his Excellency Vladimir Norov, distinguished colleagues, scholars, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to join this webinar today on India's relations with SCO, and I appreciate the efforts of Director General of ICWA, Ambassador Raghavan, and his team for taking this initiative. This webinar comes at a time when we are expanding and enriching our imprint on the organization by assuming the chairmanship of the Council of SCO Heads of Government later this year. Linked to this responsibility and our journey in the SCO in the past three years is a palpable optimism for this vibrant organization and the vast opportunities it opens up to a resurgent and self-reliant Atmanirbhar Bharat. The Shanghai Cooperation Organization has emerged as a key regional organization in the Eurasian space in the past two decades of its existence, accounting for over 60% of Eurasia's territory and more than 40% of the world's population, the member states of SCO account for almost a quarter of the world's GDP. The induction of new states, both as permanent and observer members, has not only expanded the frontiers of the organization, but also helped to broaden its scope and effectiveness. The renewed momentum in building regional synergies is reflected in addressing common security challenges and building long-term economic and energy linkages. While still a work in progress, there inherently appears to be a strong desire among SCO stakeholders to strengthen the bonds of regional cooperation. This is arguably best reflected in co-opting Afghanistan as an observer state and setting up the SCO contact group on Afghanistan with a view to provide support in the process of national reconciliation and socio-economic stability. It was also most recently evident in joining forces to mitigate the socio-economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. As the Director General mentioned, India received the observer status of the organization in 2005 and was accorded the full membership in 2017. More than a decade of engagement with the organization underscores India's willingness to play a more meaningful role in this regional grouping. 
This optimism also stems from India's desire to deepen its Eurasian partnerships. In this context, SCO provides a perfect springboard for India to reconnect to this extended neighborhood, with which we are bound by the enduring bonds of centuries of common history. India's cultural heritage is deeply influenced by countries in Eurasia. Indian traders and travelers had traded along the caravan routes for centuries, and Buddhism had flourished across the vast Eurasian steppe. History is full of close interactions between India and Central Asia through movement of people, goods, and ideas, including spiritual interfaces that enriched us both. The fondness for Indian culture is expressed in Central Asia's deep interest in Indian cinema, music, and art. Acknowledging the strength of these umbilical bonds, India's growing economic potential and vast experience and expertise in building institutional capabilities can add greater value to SCO's ongoing projects and share best practices in newer areas to forge a common vision for the region. India's chairmanship of the SCO Council of Heads of Government during 2020, culminating in the summit in India in November, in fact, the date is November 30th, 2020, affords us an opportunity to contribute in a substantive way on the trade and economic agenda of SCO. That will be the main mandate of the summit in November. During the course of the year, we have broken new ground with respect to three areas in which we have proposed to synergize our collective strengths. Startups and innovation, traditional medicine, and science and technology. India has offered to host a new SCO special working group on startups and innovation. Formation of a new subgroup on cooperation in traditional medicine for attainment of sustainable development goal number three, and hosting the first ever SCO conclave for young scientists. We are also striving to create a more active and focused intellectual discourse on identifying areas of potential and mutually beneficial cooperation in trade and investment within SCO. The first step in this direction was taken on the 20th of August this year, when India successfully hosted the first ever meeting of the consortium of economic think tanks of SCO. We are grateful for the full support from all member states to this meeting and now look forward to the finalization of the Delhi Action Plan as an outcome document to be presented to the leaders of the SCO heads of government meeting in India in November. We are also convinced that open, inclusive, and focused B2B interactions will eventually pave the way for developing policies within SCO that are demand-driven and dovetailed to the socio-economic needs of the member states. To implement such a vision, FICCI, as the national chapter from India in the SCO Business Council, will host the SCO Business Forum in November that will strive to find a common ground for greater trade and investment in MSMEs, agro-processing, digital economy, pharmaceuticals, and green technologies, etc. Similarly, Invest India will host the first ever SCO Startup Forum in October to focus on key areas like best practices workshops, corporate and investor engagement, procuring social innovations, and knowledge sharing sessions. The encouraging aspect of such an outlook is that the areas of interest were identified by member states themselves at the preparatory seminar held by Invest India on the 11th of August, which was attended by more than 60 delegates. India would also like to contribute to a greater understanding of each other's cultural heritage by fostering greater people-to-people -people contacts. Unfortunately, Due to the pandemic, we could not host physical meetings this year, but we are nonetheless going ahead with holding the digital exhibition on shared Buddhist heritage in SCO member states at the National Museum in Delhi, and the translation of classics of Indian regional literature into the SCO languages of Russian and Chinese. Bringing together the youth of SCO is another area we are focusing on. The first step from our side is to join the SCO Youth Council this year with the National Service Scheme being nominated to lead from India. We are hopeful that with these efforts, we will encourage a paradigm shift in our perceptions of each other's cultural and civilizational heritage and bonds that unite our region. I'm very happy to note that today's webinar has witnessed such high level participation. We have uh, plenty of serving ambassadors who I see on the screen. We have a number of very distinguished former ambassadors as well as experts from around the country. And of course, most of all, I would like to thank our Secretary General, His Excellency Vladimir Norov,
for taking the time to participate in today's webinar. This is a testimony to the potential of the organization as it finds a larger role for itself on the world stage. India fully supports the spirit of consensus and mutual understanding that have been the hallmarks of this organization. During the course of our current chairmanship of the Council of Heads of Government and beyond, we hope to play a constructive role in enriching the agenda of the SCO by placing human beings at the center of our thought and actions to foster greater prosperity and well-being for our entire region. I thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary, for those uh, remarks and also for sh sharing with us uh, all the details of the different projects and programs which are uh, in the pipeline. These will be very, very useful for our discussions uh, today. Uh, may I now request uh, Ambassador Larmir Norov, Secretary General of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, to <coughs> address uh, the Council to share with us your assessments about today's meeting. Thank you very much, Secretary. Thank you. Thank you, dear Dr. Raghavan, dear Mr. Vikas Swaroop, dear participants of the webinar. Good afternoon. I thank the Indian Council of World Affairs for facilitating the organization of this webinar. Early this year, I had the privilege of visiting your wonderful country in my capacity as the ASIO Secretary General, during which we had a meaningful discussions at the Indian Council of World Affairs in New Delhi. And uh, it is for me great honor to participate in this webinar in which participating distinguished experts and think tankers of India, among them is our friends and partners. I know Mr. Raghavan from my capacity as a director of Institute, head of director of Institute of Strategic Studies under the president of Uzbekistan, we had good chance to sign MAU for cooperation. Today we have the opportunity to continue our discussions over the issues of India SEO cooperation, the next steps. We know the ICWA is a leading think tank of India, which focuses on studying major regional and international issues, as well as determining prospect for foreign policy development. And I believe this today's discussion will be very useful for identifying new steps for strengthening cooperation between SEO countries and India and SEO. India's accession by the assessment of ACO member state to the ACO gave the organization a new quality and dynamics and increased its ability to withstand modern challenges and threats. The role of ACO as important mechanism for shaping regional and global policies, ensuring security and sustainable development has been strengthened. We highly appreciate the efforts of Indian side to further deepen mutually beneficial cooperation within the ACO in accordance with the principles of Shanghai spirit. At the recent ACO summits in Tsingdao and Bishkek, in which India participated as a full member, Indian Prime Minister, His Excellency Mr. Modi made a number of important proposals aimed at further deepening cooperation in all areas which was mentioned by uh, Mr. Vikas Swarup. And uh, for the first time in India on 8 November last year, the 10th meeting of heads of agencies of the ACO member state dealing with disaster management was organized. I would like to note India's active participation in the ACO security mechanism, including the regional anti-terrorist structure and the implementation of the ACO anti-drug strategy. ACO also welcomes India's active participation in anti-terrorist military exercises. This year, for the first time, India is chairing the meeting of ACO's second most important body, the Council of Heads of Government, which is planned to be held in India in November this year. The body is the main mechanism responsible for the development of trade, economic, cultural, and humanitarian cooperation among the ACO member states. The meeting of prime ministers will be preceded by meetings of ministers of trade, justice, the Council of National Coordinators, and financial experts. The first meeting of the consortium 
of economic think tanks was held in constructive spirit on August 2021, this year in the format of video conference at the initiative of the Indian side. The consortium discussed an action plan for joint research aimed at boosting trade and economic cooperation within the SEO region. Today, SEO is a space, as it was mentioned before, that brings together almost half of the world's population and a huge consumer market with a rich natural resources, advanced production facilities and technologies. It is rightly assessed by International Monetary Fund. The total GDP of member countries last year amounted to 22.4% of the world total or 19.5 trillion US dollar. By 2030, it is expected to grow to 35-40% of the world GDP. The total foreign trade turnover of the ACO member states with foreign countries, non aco countries, in last year they exceeded $6.3 trillion. However, the trade turnover between the ACO member states does not exceed 5% of total and is about 305 billion US dollar. However, if we look to at organization like ASEAN, the mutual trade between the countries of ASEAN is 27%. As it seems, our trade and economic cooperation does not yet correspond uh, to the level of uh, political interaction in the ACO region, as it was mentioned by Dr. Rakhavan in recent uh, webinar, which were organized about the role of uh, in, uh, uh, people diplomacy in this case. At the same time, India is among the largest economies in the world, second only to China and United States in terms of GDP. According to the PricewaterhouseCoopers, Focus the world in 2050, the share of India's economy and world GDP may increase twice by, uh, by this time, and it will become the second largest economy in the world after China. In this regard, in the near future, the Asia space may become one of the main centers of global economic development, as it was mentioned by not only experts, but at the same time, leaders of European countries like Macron in the last year, Exhibit, import exhibition in Shanghai. New areas of cooperation in the field of transport, such as the international north-south transport corridor with a length of more than 7,000 kilometers being created on the initiative of India and Russia, are intended to contribute to these goals. The estimated capacity of this corridor is about 20 to 30 million tons of cargo per year, which will reduce time delay and cost by 30-40%. These projects of cargo trans, uh, transit through the infrastructure of railroads, route, roads and seaports will create condition for sustainable economic development of SEO member states. The transport infrastructure project currently being implemented within the framework of SEO are largely aimed at solving the fundamental tasks, providing favorable condition to enter the world market, including through Indian seaports for products from geographically landlocked countries of Central Asia, which are at the core of SEO, and peace and stability in the entire SEO space depend on the well-being, economic development and prosperity of this region. That's why we highly appreciate Indian policy to, towards the Central Asia. Thus, new transport arteries will be created, which will give vitality to the entire Eurasian region. India ranks first in Asia and second in the world by the size of its rail network. By the volume of freight traffic, India ranks fifth in the world, and the country's leadership is taking a number of important steps to modernize the transport infrastructure. I'm confident that in the years to come, we will see practical benefits from the programs implemented by the government of India, which will open up additional opportunities for trade and economic cooperation with the SEO countries, increasing the volume of mutual trade and promoting joint investment projects. Moving forward in the same direction, in November last year, in the Council of Heads of Government at the ASEO member states, in Tashkent approved a new version of the program of multilateral trade and economic cooperation of the ASEO member states, which provides for the implementation of tasks 
on balanced development of effective transport infrastructure and expansion of the use of digital technologies and intelligent system in transport. In this, the area of facilitating the development of railway transport, the concept of cooperation between the railway administration of the ACO member states was adopted, and we sincerely hope that India will intensify its participation in the implementation of these ACO documents. Dear ladies and gentlemen, in recent decades, India has made great progress in industrial development and has become an attractive center for foreign investment in the manufacturing sector. Now India is also on the way to becoming a center of high-tech man tech manufacturing. The Make in India initiative is one of the flagship projects of the Indian government, led by Prime Minister His Excellency Narendra Modi, aimed at demonstrating India's technological and industrial potential as a global industrial center. It is believed that India's manufacturing sector could reach one trillion US dollar by 2025. Despite the fact that such large world economies as India, Russia, and China are part of the ACO, the share of domestic trade between the ACO countries, as I have already mentioned, it, remains small compared to the total volume they trade with other countries. The ACO member states are working to create joint industrial clusters and implement multilateral investment projects based on the natural regional advantages and potential of member states. The ACO Business Council and the ACO Interbank Association play important role in this process. We call on India to participate more actively in the ACO regional initiatives to expand trade and economic ties. In this regard, we welcome the initiative of India's National Business Council to hold the ACO Economic Forum in the fourth quarter of this year. We believe that agreements on simplification of transport and customs procedures, formation of uniform phytosanitary control standards for an interrupted flow of goods will contribute to the growth of trade and industrial sector of all Asian member states. During the COVID-19 pandemic, the rapid transition to online mode for significant part of work acti activities of Secretariat and for also the work of the most important government, healthcare and educational services, showed the effectiveness of IT technologies. And now more experts believe that IT will play an important role in recovering from this economic crisis. Microsoft estimates that 2025 demand for new digital skills will increase more than ever and 149 million new jobs are expected. The ACO region, which covers almost half of the world population, is a huge market for joint innovation projects in the IT and digital commerce accounts for about 20% of world trade. By 2025, it is expected to increase to 25%. E-commerce based startups in India account for 60% of the total number of startups and therefore dominate the industry. It seems that the future belongs to those who can effectively use the huge potential of the IT industry in the development of the economy and social sphere of the states. That is why at this ACO summit in Bishkek, the concept of cooperation of the ACO member states in the field of digitalization and information and communication technologies developed on the initiative of Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan was adopted. Given India's huge potential in the ICT industry, we look forward to the country's active participation in the implementation of this concept in multilateral format with the companies in the mostly leading in this area, China and Russia, on the base of state-private partnership. Dear participant of the webinar, the ACO plays close attention to humanitarian ties in order to strengthen the Shanghai spirit. The member states work fruitfully in the fields of health, education, culture, tourism, and developing contacts, contacts among young people. In the current context of the coronavirus pandemic, India's health achievements are inspiring and deserve special attention. India ranks third in the world in terms of drug production and meets 62 percent of world demand for vaccines. Over the past 50 years, Indian pharmaceutical companies have been successful in gaining a leading position in the global pharmaceutical market. As for the next steps in cooperation between India and the ASIO, especially in the past COVID-19 area, India could 
actively participate in the implementation of joint projects to produce pharmaceutical products, application of latest technologies in health care system, and creation of telemedicine network in the ACO member states. It is great to find to note that during this public health crisis, the ACO member states have demonstrated a high degree of solidarity and cohesion, actively provide comprehensive assistance and support to each other, and constantly exchange experience in combating this evil in, to humanity. During that video conference of the ACO foreign ministers on 13 May this year, India's foreign minister, Mr. Uh, Jai Shankar, affirmed India's strong commitment to jointly fight the COVID-19 pandemic and its readiness to exchange information, experience, and best practice with the ASEAN member states, and now this statement in full implementation in member states. India's contribution to preservation and development of traditional medicine, which is an integral part of India's healthcare system, deserves special attention. Recently, India has proposed the establishment of subgroup within the ACO to develop cooperation in traditional medicine with the framework of ACO health ministers meeting mechanism. I would like to say that on 30 July, it was organized at first video conference on these important issues. And at the September, at the initiative of Indian side, the ACO video conference would be held on traditional matters. We look forward to India's active participation in development of the program of cooperation on traditional medicine of the ASEO member states, because using the, uh, the traditional medicine in treatment, uh, the, uh, the diseases, uh, coronavirus, people who had this disease showed it the high efficiency. What I would like to mention about it is that in ASEO area, more than 800 million young people aged 15 to 24 uh, leave. And this fact makes it more important for the ACO to work towards realizing high potential of young people in the right direction to develop the intellectual and professional skills and abilities of the young generation of our countries. Currently, with the coronavirus pandemic, most of our countries have fully or partially closed educational institutions and many students have been transferred to distance learning. India's high education system has more than 6 million students from India and around the world. Today, India ranks third in the world after China and the United States in terms of number of high educational institutions. At the same time, IT specialists educated in Indian universities are in demand all over the world today. In ASIO, within the framework of the first session, of the Coordination Council meeting of the ASIO universities, established at the initiative of the Russian side, which brings together 79 universities of member states. A plan of cooperation was adopted for development of distance education and training of highly qualified specialists in the field of information and communication technology. We hope that India will too join to, uh, to the ACO University and can contribute to development of distance education and ACO area. A joint communique of the Council of ACO Heads of State in Tashkent in November last year supported the, the initiative of the Chinese side on establishment of international youth business incubator to provide assistance to setting up a startups by youth in the ACO region. The ACO Youth Councils plays an active role in implementing these documents. India ranks third in the world by the size of the startup ecosystem. We also welcome India's initiative to create a special working group on startups and innovations in framework of ACO. At the ACO summit in Sindao uh, 2018, India's Prime Minister, Mr. Modi, noted that for several thousand years, the geographical region represented by SEO countries has been a source of inspiration for scientific and philosophical progress throughout the world. Buddha, Confucius is just one example. Samarkand, Bukhara are also examples of our common heritage. Mahatma Gandhi and others, there are countless examples of great people who have inspired humanity throughout the world. In order to create a single tourist space, the SEO Secretariat has initiated the eight wonders of the ACO project, which 
includes one wonder from each member states. To it is, we express our gratitude to the Indian side for supporting this initiative and including the wonder uh, statute of unity from India. This uh, project uh, has hosted uh, presentation was in Beijing, St. Petersburg, Dushanbe, Xi'an and Helsinki. We look forward to jointly exhibit it in India at the upcoming International Tourism Exhibition in the country. Tourism is one of the India's main sectors to the country's GDP driven by sustainable economic growth. Uh, government of India also plan to develop tourism infrastructure across the country to provide a better tourism experience for tourists. And we hope that active participation of India in the implementation of the action plan for the uh, and program implementation of program of cooperation of your member state in field of tourism uh, for the period 21, 20, 2021 and 2022 will give a new impetus to interaction between the parties, promote mutual understanding and mutual respect between our peoples, deepen cultural and economic ties between Asia and member states. We fully support ideas to organize special exhibition on uh, Buddha's heritage on the uh, because as it is should be uh, it is well known in the world that Buddha uh, traveled through SEO countries from uh, India to Afghanistan then to Central Asia and from Central Asia to China and to others as your member state that's why this initiative is very important to see, to show how our cultures our traditions our ideas is interconnected to each other in general we believe that the multifaceted practical activities of ASEO member states lead to formation of large Eurasian partnership, a broad integration framework that should be developed on the basis of network of regional association, the ASEO, European Union, Eurasian Economic Union, ASEAN, and transcontinental project taking into account principles of transparency and respect for the interests of each participants. Taking into account India's close cooperation with ASEAN countries, we look forward to the country's active participation in the implementation of the list of possible activities between the ASEO Secretariat and ASEAN Secretariat for 2019-2020. In this regard, I would like to learn more about the ideas of our Indian colleagues on the agenda of our webinar as India's presence in SEO significantly expands our opportunities for cooperation in the Euro-Asian uh, space. I wish the participant of the webinar fruitful work and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Secretary General. Thank you for those uh, very constructive and positive uh, remarks. Uh, may I say I particularly uh, liked your emphasis on two points. Firstly, uh, cultural cooperation, uh, and secondly, the focus you gave uh, on young people. Uh, and I think that is a point which we often uh, miss out, and I'm very heartening to see the emphasis you play uh, you place on these two uh, aspects. Now, I know you had agreed to take a few uh, questions, and I've received a number there are also some questions in the chat box. So if you agree, Secretary General, may I place one or two questions before you uh, for to hear your thoughts also uh, on them. Uh, one, one question uh, which is uh, there, which is about uh, how the SCO can play a significant role in bringing peace and stability in Afghanistan. And there is a related question on could you make an assessment of the SCO Afghanistan contact group in the context of the Afghanistan peace process? Thank you uh, for this question. Certainly, uh, if you were looking to the history of uh, establishing this organization, uh, next year it will be 20 years on 15 June 20, 2001, it was established by joining Uzbekistan to these five countries unity. And uh, it was time when World International Terrorist Organization uh, stayed on the border with Central Asian countries. And it was a great challenge to the region. And that's why we can say that Afghanistan played an important role from the first days of creation of this organization. And uh, Afghanistan 
uh, certainly member states have always been proactive and dedicated in taking steps to assist our partners. Afghanistan has observed state to move forward on a path of political stability and economic development. It was with this intention that the roadmap for the action of the Asia Afghanistan contact group was adopted last year in Bishkek, which uh, defined the specific tax task of the ACO member state in assisting the economic reconstruction of the country, counteracting international terrorist organization based in Afghanistan and the, uh, the threats posed by them to the ACO region, cooperating with the Afghan authorities in the fighting against drug trafficking and illegal migration, as well as with the other international organizations. The leaders of ACO member states have demonstrated unanimity in their strong commitment to the sovereignty, independence, territorial integrity, and national unity of Afghanistan, as well as offered unwavering support for Afghan government and people in their efforts to, uh, to rebuild their country and strengthen democratic institutions. This support not stop it in the time of spreading coronavirus in our countries. Uh, and today, Afghanistan uh, faces many challenges pertaining to security and economic development, like forms of terrorism, extremism, and drug-related crimes. There is a need to objectively analyze the situation unfolding in Afghanistan in its impact on stability and security in the region in general. The last year broke records in terms of the number of terrorist attacks committed by the militants in Afghanistan of special Concern is the concentration of armed opposition in the border areas of Afghanistan, including terrorist groups with the Central and South Asian nationals as members. The production of narcotics is also reported to be steadily growing. According to various estimates, it all amounts to 64% of revenues made by terrorist and extremist forces. Production of uh, synthetic drugs, which has a growing demand abroad, uh, due to their relatively low prices is on the rise in this country. In this connection, the role of SEO in the countering drug trafficking is relevant and considerably increasing. Despite the, uh, the, the, the current situation in Afghanistan complicates the process of implementing some key provision of the Qatar agreement, which affects full-scale launch of genuine inter-Afghan dialogue. I participated uh, in this um, uh, signing ceremony, and, uh, and all, everyone who participated in this ceremony expressed a strong uh, intention to support the for implementation of this peace agreement, uh, this agreement, the Qatar agreement. At the same time, with the planned withdrawal of American troops, the ACO's role in helping to solve the Afghan problem is objectively increasing. In this regard, further joint work to implement the ACO Afghanistan contact uh, group roadmap is particularly needed. The Secretariat is ready to uh, facilitate to develop regulation on organization of such meeting, experts meeting, because it was uh, before such meeting on level of deputy ministers of foreign affairs, expert meeting should be organized. We think that it is important. That's why we proposed our uh, such document for and sent it to member states. Moreover, I think many of our countries fully agree with the Prime Minister Modi's position that a united, peaceful, secure, and prosperous Afghanistan is an important factor for stability and security in the ACO region. Our goal is to support the efforts of the government and people of Afghanistan to launch a comprehensive peace process in Afghanistan that is initiated, led, and control it by Afghanistan. What is important today, we think uh, how we can give support. Afghanistan, uh, historically, culturally, ethnically, always was and is the uh, part of Central Asia. Today, in Central Asian countries, uh, and as all ASEO member states, uh, uh, give special attention for integration of Afghanistan. That Uzbek uh, pr uh, can, uh, president, Shavgat Mirziaev proposed the construction of the railroad from uh, Mazari Sharif uh, from Kabul to Peshawar and to Herat from Herat to Iranian seaports. They, we consider this uh, transport integration of Afghanistan to ICO transport networks will give impetus for trade development of this country plus 50 percent 
It is now we see as some regional organization as ASEAN has a good practice replacing uh, drugs production by some alternative. How we can replace Afghan drugs? If we can do not do it together, this threat from Afghanistan will continue. But with our transport routes, Afghan farmers cannot uh, achieve the world market to have the good money from uh, agricultural products, not from um, drug. That's why it is more important that um, all member states give supports, and India, the same supports to Afghan side, is very important and positively assessed. And there is more important, uh, should be giving attention, as, as you said, uh, there, Mr. Uh, uh, Raghavan, that it is important focusing on youth on the young population of Afghanistan, it should be priority for us. Uzbekistan uh, uh, president's initiative, it was to establish on border with Afghanistan in Termes, special training center, perhaps 200 young men and girls educated for 16 profession. And at the same time, uh, uh, Kazakhstan special program doing for 1,000 young men educating from Afghanistan. We should focus our effort to support this young men, and we have in secretary at the same doing our activity for supporting to uniting Afghan students who are studying in Beijing, uniting to this our activity. And uh, certainly, uh, it is already 40 years since Afghanistan has been suffering the pain of violence and instability. It is the time now to act and act decisively to help Afghanistan come out of this uncertain past to a promising future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary General. And I'd like to thank Ambassador Yogendra Kumar for that uh, question. Now, there were a few more questions, but I know we are running out of uh, time. So I must uh, leave those to be taken up on some uh, other uh, occasion. Uh, before I hand over to my colleague for the closing remarks, may I again thank Secretary Vikas Swaroop for his presence here today and also thank you. Secretary General, for your uh, remarks and for your presence today, and also giving us a very, very useful roadmap of how you see the engagement and the interface between India and the SEO in the year ahead. Um, may I now request uh, Dr. Athar Zafar to bring the inaugural session to a close. Thank you, sir. His Excellency Vladimir Noro, Secretary General, Shanghai Cooperation Organization, we express gratitude to you for your opening address. Certainly, many pertinent points were highlighted during the address and in response to the query from the audience. For delivering the special remarks, we thank Ambassador Vikas Soru, Secretary in the Ministry of External Affairs, and I would like to thank our Director General, Mr. T.C.A. Raghavan, for the welcome remarks and moderating the session. Thank you all once again. With this, we come to the end of the inaugural session. Thank you.